What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, this video for some of you guys in the YouTube boxing community that are really sensitive, you're uber sensitive, um, you're pansies, you need to pull your skirt up, that kind of thing. You might want to hit the pause button because what I'm going to talk about, I know it's not going to go well with everybody, but I speak from the heart. I'm real. I got a big mouth. I can't help it, like Tupac said. So, with this video, I'm just wondering what has happened in the world of boxing where it has evolved into such a business where we hear all kinds of stuff from trainers, promoters, um, fighters. And don't get me wrong, I love evolution, like in, in terms of like technology. I'm not one of those motherfuckers that has a VCR and I won't upgrade to the DVD or to the Blu-ray player. I have the latest and greatest in terms of technology. I stay up with technology. I'm not one of those old school primitive, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why shouldn't I use my 8-track? Why shouldn't I use my VCR? That is not me. I've always kept up with the Joneses. But there's one aspect of the evolution of boxing that I don't really like. And trust me, social media, everything has its place. So, like social networks and all that kind of stuff. It has its place. It makes sense. It makes these stars um, bigger than life or bigger than they possibly could have been in the Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali days. Like Muhammad Ali used to show up at his opponent's gym and talk shit and through word of mouth and like the radio and, and stuff like that and TV and limited media. He was able to build up his legacy, but not everyone has the mouthpiece or I guess the the persona of a Muhammad Ali. So it's definitely open gateways for a lot of fighters who don't necessarily do much talking. Like you got fighters like Canelo. I don't really hear him talk too much. Um, he doesn't boost himself up. He kind of does what he does in the ring and that's it. And there's a lot of fighters like that. But based on social media, um, the Marcos Maidanas and, and people like that, we're able to see them. So I'm all for that. One aspect that I do not like is how boxing has evolved into such a business where it's like if this doesn't make business decision, like if this doesn't make enough business decision, then it's not going to happen. Like fuck what the fans think. Fuck what actually makes sense. We're not doing it. This is all sparked by a comment that I read about Nacho Bearstein. In no way am I taking shots at a legend. Nacho is a legend. He's a legendary trainer. He's done great work. But he's talking about a rematch with Bradley. And first of all, if you want to come and comment on this video, do your history. First of all, Nacho and Marquez weren't even too keen on the idea of fighting Bradley. They were like, oh no, we don't really want to fight him. After the Ruslan Provotnikov fight, all of a sudden Marquez and Berestein are on board. But if you go to boxing scene, I think they were showcasing it. Um in different sites and interviews before the Ruslan Provodnikov fight, they wanted no parts of Bradley. They said, oh, we, why, we don't want to fight him. It doesn't really make sense or whatever. Then they seen him struggle with Ruslan Provodnikov. And then all of a sudden, Marquez was heavy on the idea of, oh, five weight divisions and five titles and setting history, being the first Mexican to do that. And then the fight takes place. Everyone's seen the outcome. And I think they're taking this loss really hard. Bearstein saying that I think we won by three or four points. We made him look ridiculous. Nobody's made a miss um, like we did. We imposed ourselves tactically, made a miss all night. Um, then this is the part that I don't agree with. Nacho Bearstein says as far as a rematch, there's no need for it. There's no point. He's a fighter that doesn't sell. They've gifted him in the two fights that he's had with the two best fighters, which are Pacquiao and Juan. Who is he going to fight? What is he going to sell? And what is he going to win? That's what he's saying about Bradley. So, obviously, he's paying Bradley no type of respect, saying the fight doesn't make sense, which is basically the same thing like Freddie Roach and Manny Pacquiao said after a controversial win um, that Bradley had over Pacquiao. What I don't understand is when did boxing become such a popularity contest to the point where redemption, things like revenge, avenging losses doesn't come into play like it doesn't make sense like some of you guys the fans and trainers and promoters alike all of you guys some of you guys have the most skewed outlooks that i've ever even seen nacho saying 
why avenge this loss? Why have a rematch? Because he doesn't sell. Fuck that. If Marquez has been fighting since 93 and he's such a big star, who cares what numbers Bradley does? He should have, it should sell based on Marquez's star power. Plus, you got a shot at it. You didn't win. Why would you not want to avenge that loss and still become the the first Mexican to achieve titles in five weight divisions? I don't understand it. If you think you beat Bradley so easy and you made a miss all night and it's an easy fight and you clearly won the fight, why would you not want to avenge that loss? Like, I don't understand. The same thing with Pacquiao and Bradley. Like, why not fight him again? And the only thing the best you can come up with is Bradley doesn't sell or he's boring. That's whack. That's retarded to me. Um, you look at other great fighters, Roy Jones Jr., he got, dis he got disqualified when he was fighting Montel Griffin, and he lost that fight. So it was the first L on his record of his pro career. And he was like, that's bullshit. I was piecing him up. I was whooping his ass. And he immediately wanted a rematch. He rematched Montel Griffin, and he knocked him out in the first round. That's what fighters have been known to do. And the same fans that are saying, agreeing with Bear Stein, saying, oh, a rematch doesn't make sense. Bradley's boring. He doesn't make sense to fight. Um, he doesn't sell and all that shit. Y'all the same ones who potentially harass Floyd Mayweather for beating or losing to Castillo. In your mind, you say, oh, Mayweather lost to Castillo, even though he fought him with one arm. You say he lost to Castillo. And even though Mayweather fought Castillo that same year, like he didn't wait four years like Pacquiao and Marquez to have a rematch. He fought him in the same exact year and convincingly beat him. But you want to hold a fight that happened over a decade ago over Mayweather's head as far as, oh, Castillo beat him. Mayweather should have a loss. He shouldn't be undefeated. Blah, blah. He should be 45 and 1 or whatever, whatever the fuck. Um, Y'all the same ones that drudge up that old shit, that old Castillo fight, even though Mayweather avenged his loss, silenced the critics. Some people said, oh, it was a close fight. I don't know if Mayweather won. He got his shoulder rehabbed and had the surgery and fought Castillo again and made it look like easy work. So I don't understand the logic, I guess, in some of you boxing fans. The people who were saying, yeah, Pacquiao doesn't need to fight Bradley. He doesn't sell. Pacquiao's a superstar. Who cares if Bradley sells? It's about honor, integrity, getting your belt back. Same thing with Marquez. You had a title shot. You didn't win, like who? Like I said, why wouldn't you want to? Why wouldn't you want to rematch? That makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Even Abner Mars got knocked out cold by Johnny Gonzalez, and he's immediately done interviews saying he wants a rematch. That's, I mean, I respect that way more because he got knocked out cold, and obviously you can't dispute a knockout. But he at least has enough integrity and pride to say, man. He got me that night, but I want a rematch. You know what I'm saying? Like, who loses their title and because someone else doesn't sell or they're not as popular or they're boring, wants to bow out and doesn't want to have a rematch? I don't understand that about the sport of boxing. Why would you not want to have a rematch when someone took something from you? If you steal from me, I want it back. No questions. I'm not going to... If someone broke into my house and stole my Blu-ray and my PlayStation 3... You think I want them to keep it and I know who did it? You think I'm just, oh, yeah, keep it. It's your PS3 now. You can play Grand Theft Auto Five. Like, no. Why would I? If you have something that's mine, I want it back. And I don't understand for the life of me why these fighters, promoters, trainers are so eager to just let, oh, let's just let bygones be bygones. Bradley doesn't sell. We don't want to fight him. Like, that's, that's stupid. Like, the only reason you don't want to have a rematch is because he doesn't sell, even though he took something from you. He added something to your resume that you didn't want, which is a loss. Like, I can't understand that. So if you can help me understand that, please leave a comment and let me know, aside from favoritism, popularity contest, why on earth would you not want to avenge your loss to, and this is, these are like pay-per-view losses that everybody sees. It's not like, oh, on ESPN Friday Night Fights, like, I would say the Norwood fight with Marquez, like, okay, obviously he's not going to go back all the way in time and avenge that loss or Chris John. You know what I mean? Those fights have been weight, different weight classes and years ago. But recent fights like Pacquiao losing to Bradley, 
if it was easy work, then why doesn't Pacquiao want to fight him? If Marquez made him miss all night and and they feel they really truly won, why not rematch Bradley? I don't. I mean, I really don't understand it. So help me understand that. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. As always, hey, comment or subscribe to the next video. It's Ego signing off.